Welcome to Exploring Facebook. In this segment, I'll be showing you the various features and terminology within Facebook, what they mean, where they are, and how to use them. In this section of the workshop, you will see an image called a thing link. If you hover over it, you will see small red circular icons that will appear. If you click on any of those, they will give you a short explanation of the Facebook homepage. The home page is the first page that appears whenever you sign into Facebook. The home page displays your news feed, which is in the middle of the page. That shows you the things that your friends have shared with you. The home page also allows you to navigate to other parts of Facebook, such as your timeline, your apps, your groups, photos, and more. When you post things like your status updates, photos, and more, you'll generally see an audience selector tool that lets you select who you want to share something with. Just click the down arrow and choose. Most everything in Facebook is customizable. You can adjust what you see in your news feed by following or unfollowing friends, adding people to your friends lists, and hiding stories that you don't want to see. To unfollow a person, a page, or a group directly from the news feed, click in the top right of one of these stories, select unfollow. If you unfollow friends, pages, groups, events, or apps, you can always add them back to your news feed later if you change your mind. To add them back to your news feed from your home page, hover over the news feed bookmark in the left column, click the icon that appears to the left, and select Edit Settings. Click the X next to the name of the friend, the page, the group, the event, or the app whose stories you want to unhide. Then click Save. You'll see stories in your news feed about your friend's activity on Facebook, including when your friends like or comment on posts from people you're not friends with. If you don't want to see stories in your news feed about a friend's activity on Facebook, you can always unfollow that friend. By clicking on your name, on the top right side of Facebook, it brings you to what is called your timeline. Only you and your friends can post something on your timeline, but you can also adjust your settings to allow only you to post. So who can see it in their news feed? Posts on your timeline may appear in other places on Facebook, like your news feed and search for people who are in the audience they're shared with, like friends and public. You can select the audience for things that your friends post on your timeline. You can remove stories that you and your friends post. To remove, go to your timeline, hover over the story, and click. Select either delete or hide from the timeline from the drop-down menu. Hide from the timeline removes the story from your timeline, not Facebook. Delete removes the story from Facebook entirely. One thing that tends to be confusing 
is the difference between your home page, your timeline, pages, and groups. Your home page or your news feed is all about your friends' activity. Your timeline is all about you. Your home page, often called the wall or your news feed, is what you see when you log on. Regular updates of all the messages people send you and the things that you have are also included. This is private. Only you can see this page. It's about your friends, but this is not what they see. Your timeline, which contains your profile, it's your personal wall of information, and it's what you see when you click on the picture of yourself. It's also what others see when they click on your name. Now, there's ways that you control who sees everything on your timeline. Facebook pages look similar to timelines, but they offer unique tools for connecting people to a topic they care about, like a business, a brand, an organization, or even a celebrity. Pages are not separate Facebook accounts, and they are managed only by people who have a personal account. You can like a page to see updates in your news feed. We'll be talking more in the next section about pages and groups and which are more appropriate to use for a class. What does it really mean to like something on Facebook? Clicking like below a post on Facebook is an easy way to let people know that you enjoy it without leaving a comment. But just like a comment, the fact that you liked the post is visible below it. For example, if you click like below a friend's video, people who can see the video will be able to see that you liked it. A blurb will be posted on your timeline that you liked your friend's video. The person who posted the video will also get a notification that you liked it. While you might like pages you're interested in to get updates about the activity, you may be displayed on the page you connected to in advertisements about that page or in social plugins next to the content you like. You may also see updates in your feeds and in the feeds of your friends from pages you like. You may also receive messages. Your connection to the page may also be shared with apps on the Facebook platform. You can always unlike a page or a piece of content. What's the difference between following someone and adding a friend? Well, when you add someone as a friend, you automatically follow that person and they automatically follow you. This means that you may see each other's posts in news feeds. When you follow someone you're not friends with, you will see posts that they've shared publicly in your news feed. What is a Facebook page? Well, pages allow real organizations, businesses, celebrities, and brands to communicate with people who like them. Pages may only be created and managed by official representatives. They help businesses share their stories and connect with people. If you do use a Facebook page with your students and they are able to post to it, they'll be drawing on different skills like writing, searching, curating, and sharing. They will also get to learn collaboratively and sharpen their digital literacy skills. And also, by participating in such informal learning platforms, students get to develop social and emotional intelligence, which is pivotal to their overall personality development. Pages may not, though, be the best way to set up a classroom environment, and we'll discuss that further. Here, you will see an example of a Facebook page that I created. I use it to share information about where I work and the tools and resources that I think my followers will benefit from. Facebook groups make it easy to connect with specific sets of people, like family, co-workers, or students. 
Groups are private spaces where you can share updates, photos, or documents and message other group members. You set the privacy options for each group that you create. Creating a group is the more private way to interact with your students and you still don't need to be friends with them to do so. A group is more appropriate for sharing classroom work, collaborating, sharing ideas, hosting discussions, posting class notes, scheduling reminders, and other items that are not as suitable or necessary for public sharing. Here is an image of a Facebook group that I created. In a group, you can add people, create events, write posts, share photos and videos, ask questions, add files, and even search for new similar groups to get ideas. Those people in the group can do the same things, depending on the options that you set up. To search for other groups to either explore them or join them, simply put groups named whatever in the search bar. Here is what popped up when I put in groups named adult literacy. Try some other items on your own too, like ESOL or ESL or whatever may interest you and see what happens. You may want to join them or just explore them. Here is another example of a group search using the terms job hunting. You might recommend your students look at some of these, join some, or do their own searches and report back their findings within your group. Try all different terms and see what happens. To review how a page is different from groups and which one should you create. Pages allow real organizations, businesses, celebrities, and brands to communicate broadly with people who may like them. Many times it's used as a marketing tool, and most businesses have them. Have your students check out the Facebook pages of various places that they may be interested in working in. I bet they all have pages. Groups provide a closed space for small groups of people to communicate about shared interests. Groups can be created by anyone. Some further differences are page information and posts are public and generally available to everyone on Facebook. Anyone can like a page to connect with it and get news feed updates in their own news feeds. There's no limit to how many people can like a page. Page admins can share posts from their page, and page posts can appear in the news feeds of people who like the page. Page admins can also create customized apps for their pages and check a page's growth and activity. Groups, there's more privacy settings available to groups. There are secret and closed group posts, which are only visible to group members. Members must be approved or added by other members. A group size can limit some of the features. Members receive notifications by default when any member posts in the group. Members can have chats, upload photos to shared albums, collaborate on group docs, and invite members who are friends to group events. Which should you create? Well, if your goal is to represent your business, your brand, or product, create a page. If your goals are to share with a smaller private audience and have them share also, create a group. Here is a pretty good graphic breaking down some of the different elements of Facebook, including the profile, a page, a community page, and a group.
In the next section of the workshop, we'll discuss exactly how to create a Facebook group. It's really very easy. Thanks for participating in viewing this presentation.